very sure the Christmas spirit sucked out the very things you learned about the writing test before Christmas. I will make up quickly. Now, if you remember, the writing test had two tasks. There are two writing tasks, and both tasks must be completed. So there is task one, task two. You must write your answers using full sentences. You must not write your answers at notes or bullet points. You must write your answers on the answer sheet. And you are allowed to write notes on the question paper, but this will not be seen at the exam because it will not be presented to the examiner. In writing task one, you have to respond to a situation by writing a letter. The letter may be formal, it may be informal or semi-formal. Today we're going to see the three situations. So in task one, you have to respond to a situation by writing a letter. For example, asking for information or explaining a situation. You will need to write at least 150 words in 20 minutes. So during the exam, and we'll be doing practice test on this one, during the exams and the practice test, uh, the writing task, the, the writing test has one hour slot, one hour time allocated to it, which is 60 minutes. You use the first 20 minutes for task one and the last 40 minutes for task two. Task one, you'll be writing a letter. So, Guys, this one, you should keep it in mind, it will never change. This is one of the exams you're going to take for which you know what is coming even before you go and take it. The writing task one will always be writing a letter. And then in task two, you are given a point of view. argument or a problem which you need to discuss. You need to write at least 250 words in about 40 minutes. So the total time allowed for that paper, that exam is two, sorry, 60 minutes, just one hour. The number of tasks is two tasks, task one and task two. Now task two contribute twice as much as task one to the written score. That is why a lot of time is allocated to it and that is why you will need to tackle the task two because whatever you write there, you get twice the result. You'll be marked the marking scheme are four criteria, four areas. The examiner will be checking for your grammatical range and accuracy, task response, coherence and cohesion, and lexical resource. Okay. Um, we have watched some videos on this in the past. And we know exactly what that is. Now, if you go to, I will, sh I will, I will show you something. Let me see if I can do that quickly. No, uh, that is going to distract us a lot. 
later in the class, I'm going to show you um, some videos on the on your on your platform, the British Council dashboard, where uh, videos to guide you. I think there are four or five videos on tips and guidance on the areas of the writing test. And you need to learn that. You need to watch those videos. Okay. Now. Today, I want us to concentrate on the task one. The task one. The task one will always be a letter we'll be writing in response to a situation. A clear understanding of the marking criteria is necessary for before starting with the Writing task one vocabulary. IELTS writing task one is called based on these four marking criteria. Each criteria contributes 25% of your score. So the grammatical range will contribute 25% of your score. Lexical resource will contribute 25% of your score task achievement or task response will contribute 25% of your score. Coherence, cohesion will contribute 25% of your score. Now, lexical resource, which is the use of vocabulary. The skill to use a range of vocabulary in your writing task one essay refers to Lexical resource or vocabulary skill. This criterion carries 25% of your writing score. You must pay attention to the words, usage, its location, and its synonyms. There are some words, they are used and their meaning changes once you change their position or once you change their usage or once you change that word and use a word similar to it, synonym. The points to, to be remembered while using the lexical resources are never overuse the vocabulary. The use of more complex words may destroy your sentence structure. The use of more complex words they destroy your sentence structure. When using synonyms, use the correct form of the word that matches your essay structure. Don't worry, this is a broad overview. We'll delve deep into it and you see what I mean. You use a few uncommon vocabularies in your essays. Try not to repeat the words given in the question unless you have no option to replace them. Let me read that again. Try not to repeat the words given in the question unless you have no choice than to uh, you have no choice or no option to replace them. Never repeat the same word more than once or twice in your essay. Never repeat the same word more than once or twice in your essay. If you need to use the same word, 
you can use its synonym. Synonyms. Synonyms are words that have that are similar in meaning. Place the words in the correct place where and when it is required. It must be in flow with your sentence. Okay. Vocabulary. Now, task one will be writing a letter. And every letter starts with an opening sentence or what we call the introduction. If you remember in the writing task, you'll be writing letters, but in most cases, in 99.999999% of the case, you will not be required to write an address. You just tap the letter straight away from the introduction. So what are the correct, the best, the super vocabulary that you can use to write the introduction? And for us, what we are about to teach you, if you use it well, I can guarantee you a 7.0 or better band score. What we are about to teach you, if you use it very well in your test, I can guarantee you a band score of 7.0 or better. A clear and captive introduction is required as this is the first content the examiner is going to read in your essay. Thus, keep it simple. At the same time, try using appropriate vocabulary that would describe the given situation. You may paraphrase the question to write the introduction part, but make sure you are not using the same word as in the question. One of the marking criteria for writing tasks is vocabulary, the variety of words and expression that you use. For a score of seven, for a band score of seven and above, it is necessary to include advanced words and less common expressions in the letter. It is also important to start and finish the letter correctly. Okay. Now, how do you start the letter? Keeping in mind, we are aiming for a band seven or better. The writing style, the letter may be formal or informal would define the words that you use to start and finish the letter. When it comes to formal letters, there are two types of formal letters. There's the letter you will write to an organization. Any letter you are writing to an organization is a formal letter. And when you are writing a letter, letter to an organization, you don't know who you are addressing it to. Then there's the second time of type of formal letter where you, are, you write to the head, a teacher, a 
tenant and you know the name of the person you are addressing to. So there are two types of uh, letters. So let's look at the formal and the semi-formal letters and how to start that letter. In formal and semi-formal letters, after the greeting, and the greeting in the letter is dear sir, dear madam. In a formal letter, after the greeting, we will always write the purpose of the letter. And the purpose of the letter, you may start with any of the following opening sentence. This one, chew with baba. Chew with baba. Chew with pa. I am writing to inform you that. Do, do, do. I am writing to ask or inquire. So you see what we have done there. The word ask, the synonym of the word ask is inquire. You can write any of the two. I am writing to ask. I am writing to inquire. Inquire means ask, verify, find out. Ask, verify, find out. So those two words are synonymous. Synonym, they are similar in meaning. I am writing with regard to, I am writing in connection with, I am writing with reference to, I would like to express my concern about one, two, three, four, five, six. My dear friends, the IELTS writing test that, that is waiting for you, chew any of these six opening sentences. When you go to the test, you may use any of them. Once you start this way, you have the examiner's full attention. And I promise you, you are on your way to a band seven. Okay. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Then there is a second type of letter, informal letters. In the informal letter situation, remember informal, you are writing normally letters you write to friends, brothers and sisters, acquaintances, letters that are not going to organizations are largely informal letters. So, opening sentence, Opening sentences for informal letters can start this way. 
Apologies for not writing for so long, but I've been really busy. It's been a long time since we saw each other. How are you doing when you continue? I'm just writing to let you know that. Do, 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 and it goes on. Three ways of beginning the opening sentence in your IELTS writing task one test. You cannot, you should not, you should never, don't dream of ever using any of these three opening sentences in a formal letter situation. These are for informal letters. And then the one we saw previously, this one is for formal letters. So if you are chewing the apple, make sure you chew it well and go and pour it well. Don't go and pour informal opening sentence for formal letters. Are we all clear? Yes, sir. Good. So you have introduced the letter. You have begun the letter with a beautiful opening sentence. Now you go into the meat, the body of the letter. The body of the letter where you are now going to write the purpose of the letter. Uh, let me see if I can get Adwanya can you kindly read what's on your screen for me? Adwanya Kwenchi, are you there? Yes, please. Hello, sir. Yes, we are waiting for you. Okay. The body of the letter. Each letter has its own purpose. Complaint. It's request, recommendation, or advice. Therefore, we select constructions and expressions that correspond to the particular purpose of the letter. So please, I'm done. I didn't hear a word of what you said. Can you read again if I'm better and louder? Oh. Okay. The body of the letter now, much better. Can you please hear me? It's much better now. Okay. Each, okay. The body of the letter. Each letter has its own purpose. Complaints, requests, recommendation, or advice. Therefore, we select constructions and expressions that correspond to the particular purpose of the letter. Good. So each letter has its own purpose. If it is a letter to complain, if it's a letter to request, if it's a letter of recommendation, if it's a letter seeking for advice, the purpose will vary. The purpose for a complaint letter will be different from a pep the purpose for a letter requesting for information or assistance to be different from a letter giving recommendation to be different from a letter giving advice. And therefore, the vocabulary you're going to use to describe the purpose of a complaint letter 
different from the vocabulary you use for a request letter, different from the vocabulary you use for recommendation and advice. Now let's see some. And I need all of you to pay attention. Where the letter is requiring that you ask for information, the opening sentence for the purpose of the letter will go like this. And this is uh, this are for formal letters, not for informal letters. All these are for formal letters. So you will have to use word sentences like this. I would be grateful if you could assist me or if you could share information about how to drive from Accra to Kumasi or vice versa. I would be grateful if you could inform me. Could you please tell me if no, no, no. I wonder if you could tell me, I would like you to, I need to ask your advice about six opening sentences for the purpose of the letter or the body of the letter when the letter wants you to ask for information. I will be grateful if you could, I'll be grateful if you could inform me. Could you please tell me if, I wonder if you could tell me, I would like you to, I need to ask your advice about these are six different opening sentences to the purpose of the letter, the body of the letter. Now, what about if the you are writing a letter to complain? if the letter is to complain about something. I am writing to express my dissatisfaction about. I am writing you to express my dissatisfaction about the poor service provided by your airline. I am writing to express my dissatisfaction about the hotel room that is booked for my stay. So you see, opening sentences in the body of a letter, vastly different for opening sentence in the body of a letter asking for information complain. What if you want to express thanks? You have gone to the IELTS and they, they are requesting you to write a letter thanking an organization or something. You have finished the opening sentence. Now you are in the body, the purpose of the letter. I am grateful for I'd like to thank you very much for, I very much appreciated about that. Where the letter is for an apology. They are apologizing for a situation, for an event. I am very sorry that or I am very sorry about. Please forgive me for, I'd like to apologize about. Please accept my apologies about.
where the letter is seeking for advice. The letter is seeking for advice. If I were you, I heard you should, you ought to, oh, no, 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 not the letter seeking for advice, but the letter is giving advice, sorry. Where the letter is giving advice, not seeking for advice. So where the letter is giving advice. If I were you, You should, you ought to, why don't you? Where you are writing to suggest something. Would you like me to? I think I will be great if you, if you like, I will. Okay. So far, so good. Are you following it? Does anybody have a question, a comment, a concern? Nobody has a question? No, sir. All right. Let's make progress. That is good. Means you're understanding everything. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. Useful phrases to finish the letter. You have introduced the letter. You have, introduced, you have written the body. Those beautiful opening sentences. And then you need to finish the letter. How to finish a formal letter and how to finish an informal letter. Let me see who can help me read. Esther Ankara, kindly read what is on your screen. Esther Asiye Ankara. Hey. Useful phrases to finish the letter. Formal. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope the situation will be resolved soon. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for your cooperation. If you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. Beautiful. So in formal letter, yes. So thank you, Esther. Esther, thank you very much. Okay. In formal letters, when you are ending the letter, you must use one of the following opening sentences or concluding sentences. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope the situation will be resolved soon. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for your cooperation. And please look at the spelling of cooperation, 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 not the C O R operation. This is C O O P ration. Most of you, you're writing letters and you're concluding. 
and you are writing letters and you are concluding, you conclude with a CORP, corporation. Corporation is a company. Cooperation is getting the person's understanding or support or help. Okay, where the letter is an informal letter, how to conclude an informal letter. Kezia, can you read what is on your screen? Kezia, unmute your microphone and read what's on your screen. Okay, informal. Hope to hear from you very soon. Keep in touch. If you need to know anything else, just get in touch with me as soon as you can. Thanks a lot for your help and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you very much, Casey. That is beautifully done. So these are concluding sentences Beautiful concluding sentences you can use to use informal letters. Remember, we are tackling the task one, writing test. So notice the difference. A formal letter, you are more of apologetic when you are ending. You are demonstrating humility in the concluding sentence. But in the informal letter, uh, like your body body, keep in touch. Hope to hear from you soon. If you need to know anything else, just get in touch with me as soon as you can. You cannot write a letter to an organization and tell the organization, keep in touch. <laughs> Okay, now, these are some of the threats you can use. Mr. David. Yes, madam. Please, the introduction phase. Is it necessary to write your name? Like, a, like for instance, my name is Nancy Dan, so I am writing to express my da da da. Can I start with that or I just have to start with, I am writing to that. At the end of the letter, your name is going to be there, right? Okay. At the end of every letter, your name will be there. You're going to sign off with your name. Okay. So don't start the letter with, with your name. Okay. Okay, Any thank you. Question? Oh, you're welcome. Any other question? And the, the sure. body of the letter. So the body of the letter. Uh, How many paragraphs are we supposed to write? How many? Paragraph. Paragraphs. Oh, we'll come to paragraphs. Thank okay. you for that question. I have written it down. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, so I just entered late, so I don't know whether you can refresh my mind of what you have just done. Oh, I'm so sorry. If I do that, I am encouraging you to always be late. So yes, I decline that request. Next time, come early. I respectfully decline that request. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Please. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, please, with the introduction. Mm -hmm. Um, the other um, letter assignment that you gave to us about a missing item at the train station. Yes. Um, that one, um, we are introducing yourself to them so that they will know who you are in case they find the item. So will your name or something come in there? Or that one, you have to wait to bring your name down? Well, that depends on your writing style. Don't worry, we'll come to that. Uh, 
Okay, please mute your microphone now. Okay. Please <laughs> mute your microphone. Hey. All right, much better. Okay, now let's look at a formal letter that you're going to use to complain about something and how to start that letter, the introduction. Let me see who hasn't spoken today to read for me. Cecilia, rich laugh. Please unmute your microphone and read what is on your screen. Cecilia, rich laugh. Formal letter of complaints. Point introduction. I am writing to express my disappointment regarding the into bracket level of service at your hotel or restaurant or level of customer service at your hotel during my visit last month. Black uh, bracket close. I am writing to express my dissatisfaction with the into bracket standard of accommodation at your hotel. Bracket close. I am writing to complain about the fact that, into bracket, there is no heating in our house. Bracket close. Hello, sir. Please, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Thank you very much. All right. Sir, please, I raised my hand, but you. you you couldn't call me. I was trying to also bring a view that um, in formal letter, when you are writing a formal letter, what I know is that you will not bring your name. That is why at the end, we have yours faithfully. Then you bring your name and then you sign. That is what I know. But from the beginning, you go forward to what you are looking for. Then at the end, you will conclude with your name and sign. Please, that is what I know about. Thank you. All right, Rich Love, I love that contribution. Um, we are barely scratching the surface of a letter writing. So you let's go step by step. I'm going to discuss all the points you have raised. But you see how to start opening sentences with uh, formal letters. Writing to express my disappointment regarding the level of service at your hotel, level of service at your restaurant, level of customer service at your hotel during my last visit last month. I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction with the, 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 the standard of accommodation at your hotel. I'm writing to complain about the fact that there is no heating in our room. Okay. 
Yes, madam. In the introduction, you added the purpose of the letter to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the body to the request that we should write the purpose of the letter. Yes. So, also, if Did I you, get it. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ask letter. the question again. Start the question. Mm -hmm. The introduction. We added the purpose of the letter, but we didn't go into details. But in the body, you know, we, they are also requested that we should write the purpose of the letter. So is it the body of the letter? Are we going to, that's where we are going to give the much details, isn't it? Correct. Okay. In the body, you're going to detail exactly what your experience is. For, for example, uh, this situation in the letter, In a letter complaining, um, in a letter complaining about say customer service, mm -hmm. in a letter complaining about customer service, okay. in the body I am writing to express, um, I'm writing to express my disappointment regarding the level of customer service at your hotel during my last visit. Okay. I visited, then now you're going to go into the detail. I visited okay. your hotel from the 6th of January to the 10th of January. Okay. On my arrival at the entrance, the security at the gate kept me there for over an, an hour just to open the gate and complete their security checks. Then when I moved on to the reception. They cannot find a booking I have made since a month ago and have paid for. Okay. You know, you are beginning to give a meat to the okay. opening sentence. For now, okay. our concentration is on getting the opening sentences right. Because you see, the examiner must read your paper. What will attract the examiner to read your paper is the opening sentence. If the opening sentence is not done well, the examiner will feel lazy. He will not feel captivated uh, to read your paper or the essay, sorry, the letter to the end. A poorly structured opening sentence would throw away the examiner from further reading the opening sentence. So you just glance through ah, uh, and then you spot one, two, three spelling errors, poor structure, uh, sentence structure, sentence construction. Okay, this one, bang, five. You will not read the rest. But if you write the opening sentences beautiful like this, he has no choice but to continue to read the S and the letter all the way to the end. Where examiners are uh, captured like that to read your letter to the end, I promise you that is a band seven. Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. So that is for complaining. Now, so going into the body and giving some detail, we start by saying, unfortunately, the heater is out of order. We are extremely unhappy about this situation. This is making our lives uncomfortable. The best solution would be for me to return the wrong items to you. I request my money to be refunded. Okay.
So these are words and sentence construction that will capture the attention of the examiner to read your essay completely. Okay. Then concluding the letter, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, hello, guys. That sentence, 99% yes, get it wrong. You don't say, I look forward from hearing from you, or I look forward to hear from you. I look forward to hearing from you. OK. Now, there are some uh, some things, I think it is Ghanaian, which will not fly in the United States. And today, I want to start discussing that with you. Uh, sometimes it's their culture or their way of living and uh, how they do their thing. And I mean no disrespect, or I mean no, I don't mean to laugh at anybody, but I really, 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 really to point it out to you. You see, in the US, eh, from a child of one year old, you are older than, to your boss, your CEO who is older than you, and of course is your boss, they are first names. You do not add Mr. or Madame or Miss to their first name. For instance, my name is David Adoyobo in the US. Nobody calls me Mr. David. From a child, one year old child, to my boss or to the president or to the oldest person on the land. When they meet you, they call you David without the mister or master or professor or doctor or nana or any other uh, appellation. In Ghana, everybody calls me Mr. David. Sometimes I feel very uncomfortable, but it's a culture thing. We want to show. Hey, are we okay? Mm -hmm. We want to show reverence to the elderly person. We perfectly understand. In Ghana, you can do it; it's fine. But in the U.S., no. You can meet the president of, for instance, the president of United Methodist. Um, or William. But, okay, that's another thing. Uh, in Ghana, we have short forms of names and how we can informalize names to show acquaintanceship or knowledge or we know the person. So, for example, the name Faustina is shortened to be Tina or Fausti. Um, the name Anthony is shortened to be Tony. In the US, the name William. Who knows the short form of the name William in the United States? If you're able to tell me, I'll give you a thousand dollars. Really? What did you say? Yeah, William. Really? Really? No. Yes, well. William. Will. No. Will. William. No. Will. 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 It has nothing to do with Will, so stop saying Will. Liam. <laughs> Liam. 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 Will. Liam. Okay, so let me tell you this. In the US, it's Bill. It's what? Bill. Hey, thank you very much. 
You're welcome. I owe you a thousand dollars. My mobile account is zero to the so phone. Is it coming? Can, now, your, is it? can your phone accept a uh, dollar? <laughs> My dollar account, I'll send it to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> there Thank are you. names whose short forms has nothing to do with the name. So William, anyone Bill. here called Bill in the United States? It's William. The formal name is William. Bill. It's a cultural thing. Okay. And there are many, many, many of them. So our, our president of uh, United Methodist, we'll call, we'll call him Bill. Yes. Yeah. Something that we call, all call him Bill. Youngest child to the oldest person, Bill. You don't say Mr. Bill or Professor Bill. Okay. My next observation is the use of the word please and say. Please say. You see, the word please has an implied say or madam in it already. So when you say please say, you are being more Catholic than the Pope. <laughs> Anytime you say, sir, please, please say, you are being more Catholic than the Pope. <laughs> please, madam, madam, please, you are being more Catholic than the Pope. So if you want to say something, you just say, please, then you continue. Don't add madam or say. If you want to use the say, don't add the please. Unfortunately, most of you translate that into your writing. So in your essays, please sir, please madam, you will be marked wrong. Please come. Are you guys following me? Yes. Yeah. We'll be correcting some of those things, small, 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 as we go along, so that we grow out of it. There are small, small, small things you do. Uh, it's a Ghanaian thing. You cannot carry it. David. Yeah, madam. Did you say for your wife. I can't hear you. Did you say, Mr. David? Hey. <laughs> so it's something you, we have done for long. It is part and parcel of us. If and, I can't hear you. Oh, you cannot hear me? No. Hey, hey please, it's from your end. Why? Really? We can hear, we can hear sir, very loud and clear. Yes. It's a bit strange when you say you. Hey, it's from here. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, now I want to share that video I spoke about, I talked about from the beginning, and I need all of you to pay attention. On your IELTS, on your IELTS, um, IELTS Ready platform, you go to resources, <clears throat> is it resources? Let me see. You go to home and then on the home page, you go down, you see videos. Okay, good. See videos. And when it comes to videos, the videos have been categorized. So you click on see all. Excellent. You click on see all. And then you scroll down. Good. When you scroll down, you see more content. 
the videos have been categorized into listening, reading, writing, speaking. Today we are doing writing. So I want to just show you, when you click on writing, the system will just select only the writing videos for you. And I've done that. You see writing. The first video is tips for writing the test. Second video, writing task, uh, IELTS writing task achievement, IELTS writing lexical resource, IELTS writing grammatical range, and then IELTS writing coherence and cohesion. Okay, so here you can play all these videos one after the other. Play it over and over and over. When you play it once, uh, yes, you cut, you get some of the things, but you miss a lot. Play it over again and again and again. Today, let's start with tips for writing the IL test. Sorry, I have muted the mic. Oops. One second. Right, me the one um, one second. Something is not right. One second. Let me figure out what the problem is. Can you hear the sound? No, sir. I can see the video play, but I cannot hear the sound. I need to share. Yes. The sound. Okay, one second. Yes, sir. One is about describing graph, tables, diagram, and learn techniques, how to write fast, faster. I prepared it by uh, reading the quality public yes, papers like Daily Telegraph. The by uh, reading the quality publications like the newspapers, like the Daily Telegraph, the Guardian, and so we can't. Yeah, I think the internet is a bit slow. Oh. Okay. No problem. The internet is a bit slow, no problem. I think you all have these videos on your dashboard. Is that correct? Do, yes, we, yes. do we all have the videos? Yes. Excellent. Okay. All right, so since we all have the videos, I would be grateful to all of you to spend some time. Today we have done writing tests at your own leisure time. Play all the videos, one after the other. Play it at least twice each, twice each. Watch the videos and note down points all the points mentioned in the, each of the videos, we are going to cover all. You see a term, a word, uh, you don't understand, don't worry. We're going to go through all. Okay. Do, you, do any of you have a question for me? Want to wrap up here? Sorry? Yeah, I'm watching you. Sir, please, the steps to get the videos. You say you go. The steps to get where? Me and Chabi be on. Because you know, I'm going to check the steps. Are you talking to me? Chabi, you know. 
Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Please, then set to get the videos. He said you go to home. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go right again. So please pay attention. Okay. So when you log in to your dashboard, when you get to the dashboard, when you log I in, mean, to the I dashboard, you go to the dashboard. When you're here, Kafui, when you're here, please mute your mic. All right, so when you log into your dashboard, you go to home and then you scroll down. Scroll down to videos. You will see videos and webinars. Okay, so I scroll down. Let me scroll down. Scroll down. You see videos. You go further down. You see webinars. Okay. In your case, it has not been arranged yet. So uh, you see see all up here. On top of the video, you should see see all. Click on the see all. You scroll down. After clicking see all, and then you see more content. You see all, you see listening, you see reading, you see speaking, you see writing. You just click on writing, and the system will automatically arrange all the videos and select the ones relating to writing for you. If you want to do for listening, you just click on listening. And you see the system will automatically select videos that are related to uh, listening for you. Or you select, oh, no, no, this one. Uh -huh. right. 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 One, two, three videos. If you want to do reading, system selects reading videos only. You want to do speaking videos, the system select only speaking videos. Okay, so that the videos make sense to you. You don't watch them in random. You watch one reading and then the other listening and the other speaking, you get is a bit confusing. And when you select them and the system arrange them for you, you watch them in a chronological fashion, an orderly fashion. And it makes sense to you. Okay. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Yes. 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 We'll learn how to paragraph your letters. Okay. Okay, but by rule of thumb, mm -hmm. you should not do more than three paragraphs. Okay. And each paragraph must address an objective. Okay. So learn certain objectives for your letters mm -hmm. and then paragraphing. So you okay. have objective one, objective two, objective three. So let's say I want to write about poor customer service. Mm -hmm. You must have three clear things mm -hmm. you want to write about. So the gate entering the hotel, the behavior of the gate people, then going to the reception, how the receptionist behave, and then going to the hotel room, how the room was ransacked. Three key things. Then you use paragraph one address the issue at the gate. The paragraph two, address the issue at the reception. Paragraph three, address the issue in the hotel room. You don't jump up. So you don't address uh, the issue at the gate in paragraph one and three. It doesn't flow. 
then you are charming up. That is why you, you say you lack coherence. Mm -hmm. So we'll discuss that in our next class. Okay. Do we have any other questions? No, please. All right. I do. Say. Yes, madam. Please, can we get the lecture notes? Oh, I have not given you any lecture notes today. Or, or no, you... like what we were discussing, what you asked us to. Um, you mean the PowerPoint? To... Yes, please. Oh, yes, yes. I would love to post. In fact, if you notice on your screen, this meeting is being recorded. So today's class, I'll post the recording this evening on all the pages. And it will capture okay. the PowerPoint. And that will address my good friend who is in Cameroon, who came in late and wanted me to go over like ladies. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Hi. Please, this Elizabeth, please. I have a friend in Nigeria. She's actually my in-law. She wants to enroll in the class. Can she? Which of the classes? Um, Angrenado. Oh, Angrenado is not a class. It's a whole organization. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's discuss that privately, okay? All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, on this note, thank you all for coming. Have a great. I time. also recommended it to some people, so I oh. gave them the link to follow. Thank you so much. You are so kind. Yes, Chef, please, are we coming back in the afternoon? Um, hmm, in the afternoon, I think, let's use today's afternoon, you have a pile of assignments to do. <laughs> so I want to propose that we use this afternoon uh, to do a lot more of the, the outstanding assignments you didn't do during your Christmas holidays. Thank you, yes, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I take care. Yeah, understanding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, bye bye to you all. Bye. 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 Sir, I, sir, yes. I wish you asked me if you are every Saturday having a class now. Yes, every Saturday. Oh, you didn't get the timetable? Yes, sir. I will repose the timetable. Thank you, sir. Whoever Thank has the timetable. Repose the timetable for us. So. Okay. okay. Bye bye. Thank you.